In today's video, we're going to talk about DC Studios have really messed up making it crystal clear the fans don't want to watch Shazam 2, Aquaman 2, Blue Beetle, The Flash. Yeah, sure. One of them may do well, but Shazam 2 didn't even break 100 million, didn't even break 80 million, didn't even break 70. And now they put a hit piece out via Umberto Gongolis. That tells you everything. If a studio ever uses the rap to put out a hit piece, you know it's a freaking hit piece, allegedly. Blaming The Rock for the failure of a movie. And let's break it down. So, yo, what is freaking good, YouTube? Wish you if you are new around there. Make sure to subscribe to never miss any Marvel, DC, pop culture based content that we cover on a daily basis. Because subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on. Who is really to blame for the failure of Shazam 2? There's so much to go over in this video. And also, if you could check us out on Instagram at Wash You to see the beautiful face behind the beautiful voice. And also, if you could check us out on Twitter, I wish you chi. Right, let's get into this video. So, it's no mystery that DC studios as it's now called is failing it's been failing for a long time the last time they actually a movie actually made money was the batman but that isn't that's not continuity that's an elseworld universe so james gunn single-handedly destroyed the flash shazam 2 aquaman 2 and blue beetle by announcing this ludicrous new dc plan without really having a plan now if James Gunn actually had a plan, he would be like, yo, script is done. Here's the new Superman. Batman Brave and the Bold. Script is done. Here's the new Batman. But no, you come out with this ludicrous plan, rebooting absolutely everything. Apparently, apart from the things that either you, uh, Pete Saffron, worked on. So basically, nothing else matters. And then the studio wonders why Shazam 2 didn't even break $100 million. And... Now the blame game comes out via Umperto Gongales and Scott Middleton. Hell, you know, if these two are writing an article, you'd know it's a hit piece because the rap is allegedly known for hit pieces. So The Rock has already come out, taken his L, and basically said why the movie failed. He's taking accountability for it. So Shazam 2, they want to put the blame on Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, we're going to go over this article, but it's absolutely ridiculous because it's the movie, it's the marketing the movie was actually better than what the marketing suggested it was so it is interesting when you have zachary levi saying yeah he's disappointed that his movie didn't do well well zachary levi is partly to play so billy bats and the kid version of shazam acted more mature than shazam the biggest problem with this movie is the plot and zachary levi i think was the biggest problem so billy batson gets literally no screen time in this movie but shazam is supposed to act like the child version of Shazam being Billy Batson. Everyone else, all the other actors and their adult actors acted pretty much similar. But for some reason, Shazam acted nothing. How is Billy Batson more mature than Shazam in this movie? So it's all right to point the finger and blame how Dwayne Johnson kneecapped Black Adam and Shazam 2 whilst trying to take over DC. That's actually got nothing to do with the failure of this movie. So I came across this interesting take. Here's my two cents on the whole Shazam Black Adam drama. Blaming The Rock for Shazam's underperforming at the box office highlights a concerning trend of deflecting responsibilities. Now we can't even blame the old guard at Warner Bros for this because we have James Gunn, we have Pete Saffron, we have David Zaslaw who cut corners. They literally put no marketing into this movie, and the marketing they did was terrible. By solely blaming The Rock and not acknowledging their own missteps, Warner Brothers is fair. It really is. And Shazam 2, and we're actually going to find out how successful the DC Universe is going to be going forward based on the, the remaining movies. Now, what James Gunn and Pete Saffron should... I can't really blame Pete Saffron because Pete Saffron's probably just going along with, with James Gunn because this is not coming from Pete Saffron. It is. Whatever you're doing in the future... You shouldn't have said anything until all these movies came out. It's mainly because the co-studio head basically was like, yeah, The Flash is going to reboot everything, which is actually a lie because it's not. We're not going to end up in a new universe where everything's set up. The movie's just going to, the Flash movie's just going to end in a universe where everything can reset, but we're not going to see a new Flash. We're not going to see a new Batman. We're not going to see a new Superman. We're not going to see a new one. We're not going to see all these new characters until 2025 superman legacy if that actually makes the mandate so it is ridiculous how warner brothers are basically trying to put the blame on to the rock like we said the rock's already taken his l so 
Zachary Levi just doesn't seem to care because he knows his days are numbered. He reposted this, confirming that, well done, Umberto Gongardis, you actually posted something that was real. Umberto blocked me a few years ago because I told him the Snyder Cut was going to be released and he didn't believe me and I basically trolled him after. You know what it is, it's not that deep. So Shazam himself reshared this on his story. The rap confirms that in Shazam Fury of the Gods, the Justice Society from Black Adam were recruiting Shazam in the post credit scene. The Rock denied access, and David S. Sandberg had to make a last-minute decision to add Amelia. Dwayne, The Rock Johnson attempted to restructure the DCU, centering him and Henry Cavill Superman. The Rock didn't allow Zachary Levi to cameo in a post-credit for Black Adam. Now, even if this is true, I don't take anything any actor says seriously, so I don't know. But, I mean, him resharing this, I don't actually believe this is true now, but it might be true, so it is what it is. So if Zachary Levi cameoed in Black Adam, and if Black Adam cameoed in Shazam 2, do you really think the box office would have got 100, 200 million more dollars? No, this makes absolutely no sense. This is kind of irrelevant. But to put the blame on The Rock, Shazam 2 failed and the Shazam universe failed because of The Rock. No, Black Adam should have appeared in Shazam, realistically. Okay, so if you want to put the blame game here, Black Adam was behind the seven deadly sins in the origin story, if you like. Black Adam should have actually appeared in Shazam. So if you want to put the blame game on anyone, maybe put it on Shazam 1. Where the hell was Black Adam? Black Adam should have been there. And in Black Adam, Shazam should have been there. Cool. But these were not going to blow up the box office. This was not going to make much difference. So Shazam 1, how the hell it got a sequel, I don't know. Because it had a very low production cost. 85 million. Cool. And it's ridiculous that Shazam 2... Oh, okay. No, it didn't actually. We're looking at domestic here. So Shazam 2... Did $30 million opening weekend. It did $23 million less. So Shazam 1 global total was $363 million, which was pretty low. This was in 2019. So DC has been on a massive train of missing, realistically, for a long time. Birds of Prey grossed $200 million. Massive, massive flop. Wonder Woman 1984, $160 million. Massive, massive flop. The Suicide Squad made by James Gunn. Massive flop, 167 million. But they're less known characters. They're less known characters. Cool story, bro. The studio's release of the Suicide Squad, $745 million. And now you have James Gunn, the head of the studio. What is his movie for lot? Yes, the Batman made money, but that's got nothing to do. That's an Elseworlds storyline. Sure, the Joker made a lot of money. Elseworlds storyline. Sure, Aquaman made one point, well, turned over. 1.1 billion back in 2018 and Wonder Woman 1 made 800 million dollars imagine going from 800 million down to 160 and I know what people are gonna go here yeah, the stop using excuse that's no freaking excuse here let's be honest so the Zack Snyder continuity I know what you guys he didn't direct everything he didn't have to it's his continuity Man of Steel this is back in 2013 or 2012 660 Batman vs. Superman, 870. The Suicide Squad, 645. Wonder Woman, 817. Justice League, 650. Yeah, that underperformed, but it's still up there. And Aquaman, 1.1 billion. Yet people seem to think Snyderverse movies did not make money. Yet you look at everything after 2019 and it's flopped. And I understand you're going to say <laughs> Avatar 2 bang 2 billion. And let's be honest, that realistically was not changing the game for anyone so it's an interesting time because you've got to understand even though the movies were made before james gunn and pete saffron came on to take over the dc studio they're still in charge right so if these movies flop it's partly to blame because of them they're at the studio they can advertise it it's all right going yeah the flash movie may be the greatest kind of movie ever and then james gunn's asked about shazam 2 yeah i love that movie i love that okay cool and then this whole let's bring tom cruise in. Okay. Tom Cruise got to see The Flash early. Let's not get Tom Cruise... I mean, Tom Cruise's opinion means literally nothing. Let's get Tom Cruise to hype up a movie that comes out in June. Let's not get him to talk about Shazam 2 and it might inflate the numbers and maybe a couple more people will go see it. It is absolutely ridiculous. The issues at Warner Brothers, and I do not believe Pete Saffron and James Gunn come in, makes any difference. The same issues are still occurring. And then we have a Mr. Zachary Levi putting the blame on Snyder fans. Zachary Levi agrees. Many Snyder fans are happy about Shazam 2 failure. Says the sequels, marketing was the biggest issue. Yeah, the marketing was the biggest issue, but also the movie and the plot, even though I really do like Pony Smash, the plot of the movie, it looks like maybe the old studio 
maybe the old heads of Warner Bros, maybe what Hamada had a massive say in it because the storyline didn't add anything. In fact, it took away from the original movie. But to say things like this, whilst Luvai is not blaming Zack Snyder fans for the box office miss, he did acknowledge on Twitter after the film's opening that many Snyder fans wanted the sequel to fail as a kind of revenge against Warner Brothers for dropping Snyder's DC Universe. James Gunn and Pete Saffron now in charge of DC Universe. We'll see how long it lasts. Are rebooting it? Films such as Superman Legacy, which will not feature Zack Snyder's Superman. Okay, I'm pretty sure Zachary Levi, I'm pretty sure he likes Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill's quite likable. So these comments are super ridiculous. To say the Snyderverse is, is happy because a DC movie's failed. No, every Snyderverse fan wanted Black Adam, Shazam, and Superman to all have that iconic moment, but it just didn't happen. But blaming it on The Rock is ridiculous. Yeah, we've seen what The Rock was trying to do. At least The Rock freaking tried to give the fans what they wanted. That's something you can't take away from The Rock. Yeah, sure, his movie only just turned over just under $400 million. At least he tried. That's the important thing here. He tried to give the fans what he wanted. Sure, he pushed himself into the face of it and wanted to be the face of the DC future going forward. Sure. But I would prefer to see whatever The Rock was trying to do with Henry Cavill over whatever this new plan is where we're going to have a, a slight, a really younger, okay, it's not a really younger Superman. Henry Cavill, yeah, sure, he will be pushing 40 by the time of 2025, but he looks 35. He could pass for early 30s, realistically. And then James Gunn comes out and says, oh, I didn't say that Superman was going to be 25. He could be early 30s. So what is the point of getting rid of him? It's a gender. It's almost allegedly nepotism. Let's keep all the characters that I work with even though no, my movie only turned 160 million. But yeah, let's keep using the as an excuse. Godzilla vs. Kong, that came out during the was also HBO Max day and day release. And sure, the Suicide Squad was day and day release. But Godzilla vs. Kong made just under $500 million. And it doesn't have as big fan base as the DC characters, I don't believe. I mean, if you look at the other numbers, it makes sense. So this whole blame game, and I don't believe the new DC studio heads are actually doing a better job than anything else but yeah they haven't done anything like i keep saying they are in charge of shazam 2 the flash because they've made changes they've taken out you know the henry cavill scene that probably could have made the movie do better blue beetle and Aquaman 2 lost kingdom which is currently coming out at the end of the year so yeah if these movies flop they are partly due to james gunn saying yeah the flash movie resets everything so nothing actually freaking matters even though you're degrading the current fans who you want to actually go watch the movies because like I say, if you look at the numbers, DC's not realistically had a good number in a movie since 2018 when Aquaman came out. Yeah, sure, the Batman did just over 700, but something, I mean, yeah, sure, you can keep using this word all you like, but that, that's, that's really an excuse. Top Gun Maverick, billion. Multiverse of Madness, 900. Wakanda Forever, just over 800. People are going to watch movies. They just have to be good movies. So is Shazam 2 going to pick up? I mean, I know it only technically has to break 300. Production costs of allegedly 125. Literally no money went into marketing. So opening weekend, 66 million, give or take. It probably won't break even, even with selling the rights to streaming services so they can use it. DC's in a f and James Gunn, the new DC heads are partly to blame, but putting the blame on Dwayne Johnson when he's already taken his L, this just does not give me any hope for the future of DC. And Warner Bros. Discovery use it Umberto Gongales and Scott Medelson to put a hit piece out on The Rock, but then at the same time say this. To be clear, DC has a host of problems that aren't Dwayne Johnson's fault which is why Warner Bros. Discovery is attempted in reboot under James Gunn and Pete Saffron, but in trying to shape up Black Adam as the new center of the DC Universe, a strategy that failed to boost the Black Adam and undercut that once promising Shazam franchise, Johnson may have handicapped both, painting a portrait of a celebrity who can be his own brand before they were. Yeah, sure, The Rock made some mistakes, but he's admitted to that. Why put the blame on Shazam 2? Yeah, because it would have banged if Black Adam was in a post credit scene and Black Adam would have banged more if it was Shazam rather than Henry Cavill Superman. Get it out of here. Likewise, guys, let me know what is going on with DC. And I don't even think Shazam 2 was a bad movie. It just it wasn't that good because the storyline, Billy Batson not acting anything like Shazam, Billy Batson actually acting more mature 
then Shazam, yeah, it was all over the place. There was no plot development. There was no story development. Making up some villains. The Daughters of Atlantis randomly for the plot. And they didn't really have much of a story. Don't get me wrong. I think Helen Mirren and Rachel killed it. But yeah, like I say, Shazam wasn't a bad movie. It just wasn't that good. So like always, guys, let me know how can DC be saved down below? Is James Gunn plan actually going to work? I don't think it's going to work at the moment. But maybe when he actually reveals something. I mean, hell, he's been working on a script since before September. How long does it take to write a script? Seeing as I know people like in Hollywood, uh, should have been done a long time ago. Oh, the first draft should have been handed in by now. So like always, guy, oh yeah, but he's had his studio, but he's still got to get it approved by David Zaslov still. So like always, guys, check us out on Instagram at oh, Stu to see the beautiful face behind the beautiful voice. Check us out on Twitter. Oh, it's today. I will catch you in another video very soon. Catch you later.